Welcome to Poker Streams, your online source for information, tutorials, and other tidbits from the world of poker. This first episode will be the first in our seven-part series discussing pre-flop strategy and how to cater your play before the flop to the specific conditions of the game you're in. When I first decided to create poker streams, I didn't think I was even going to do a pre-flop strategy. First of all, this is something that's been covered time and time again by giants in the poker world. Not to mention the fact that it's something that's maybe a little better suited to books and printed charts than a video. Still, I decided I should throw my hat into the ring anyway because it's the easiest area of your game to improve, and by playing correctly before the flop, even a below average player can consistently break even and even make a little money in most low limit play. The key to good preflop play is patience. You'll be throwing away the vast majority of your hands too, but by only investing your chips when you have way the best of it, you dramatically increase the expectation of each poker session. We'll discuss expectation in depth in a future video, but for now, let's just say you're increasing the amount of money that you can statistically expect to win over time by playing poker. Because this is an area that's been covered so extensively, I'd like to compare and contrast a couple of common preflop strategies, and then explain why I recommend the list of hands that I do. Then, we'll take a quick look at how position enters into the equation, as well as shorthanded play and mixing up your game. Considered by many to be the seminal work in Texas Hold'em Poker, David Sklansky and Mason Malmus' Hold'em Poker for Advanced Players includes a pre-flop strategy that's been the gold standard for years. Based on copious research and computer simulation, Sklansky and Malmus' pre-flop strategy is somewhat complicated for beginning players, but it's probably still the best one available. I also wanted to mention that Sklansky and Malmus have also published an excellent book called Small Stakes Hold'em. This book features a pre modified preflop strategy that's been specifically optimized for low limit games. Both of these books are absolute must reads. If you don't already have them in your poker library, then I strongly recommend that you visit the links page and order them both immediately. You just can't call yourself a serious poker player until you've read your Sklansky and Malmuth. My problem with their preflop strategy though is that it's a bit too loose for beginning players. I think that unless you're able to consistently outplay the vast majority of your opponents after the flop, Sklansky and Mammoth will simply have you playing too many hands. You'll still make money, but not as much as you would have if you'd just sat out a few more hands. If you're a stronger player than your opponents, though, you probably can't improve at all on these preflop selections. In Phil Helmius' books and videos, he recommends playing only the top 10 hands. These are Pocket Aces, the best hand in Hold'em, Pocket Kings, or Cowboys, Pocket Queens, Hilton Sisters, Siegfried and Roy, Ace King, or Big Slick, and Pocket Jacks. Dave Foley likes to call these Kid Dynamite in reference to J.J. Jimmy Walker. Okay, so far so good. These are the no-brainer hands. The problem is that Phil doesn't differentiate between aces through jacks and the weaker middle pairs that make the bottom half of the top ten. Like pocket tens, or nines, a couple of eights. And Phil also includes sevens and ace-queen. He recommends playing these top ten hands for as many raises as you can manage. A great idea with the aces and kings, but playing a couple of sevens this way at low limit will often get you in a lot of trouble. In addition to the top ten hands, Phil also talks about what he calls his majority play hands. Now that includes king-queen, the lower pocket pairs, and suited aces. These majority play hands would generally be played only under ideal circumstances, and usually only in unraised pots. Although overly simplistic, I do like Phil's breakdown for beginning and intermediate players playing in low to middle stakes games and tournaments. They're extremely easy to learn and put to use, and they'll allow you to consistently make money in most games. Still, I think Phil's oversimplified things just a little bit, and that you can improve on his list. For example, as I said before, 
I think his strategy overvalues middle pairs, plus it won't have you playing enough suited connectors. Regardless, Phil's books and videos are certainly worth a look. The top 10 hand strategy is more than playable, and there's much more here to be had than just a couple of lists of hands to play pre-flop. All players, from rank amateurs to professionals, will find value in Phil's strategies. Howard Letterer also has some poker DVDs out. In the interest of being thorough, I'm including a link in the links section, but I recommend strongly against buying these videos. They're almost painful to watch, and there's not really information here for any but the most novice players. But Howard has provided a preflop strategy that does an excellent job of forcing new players to be highly selective about the hands they play, and best of all, the strategy is specifically designed to avoid any questionable post-flop situations, which it does an impressive job of. If you play these hands, you'll always know exactly what to do when the flop comes, which is fantastic for new players. Kudos go out to Howard for creating probably the best pre-flop hand selection for players new to the game. So what hands do I recommend to most players? Well, like most poker concepts, pre-flop play is highly situational. Has the pot already been raised? How many players have entered the pot? What's your position relative to the dealer button? All of these questions and more have got to be answered before we can even begin to make the right move. Now this is just the first in a series of preflop discussions. In future episodes, we'll talk about playing each of the major hand groups, we'll delve into positional issues before the flop, as well as loosening up your game in shorthanded play. We'll also talk about mixing up your preflop behavior so you don't become too predictable. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye and good luck.